You only have to think for 30 seconds about the internet and the difference the internet has made to uh, human knowledge and the way that human knowledge is constructed, shared and criticised. We're at a point in human history where um, more people have more opportunity to access more information than ever before. And it's as simple as that. And in some ways, we're not really ready for it. We're still working it out as we go along. Um, but, you know, most people now have a phone in their pocket. They can look up all kinds of information instantly. So um, some traditional forms of education, some traditional pedagogies were all about just giving people that information and making them retain it. There's less need for that now. The things that people have been talking about today are around the challenges brought by this kind of technological change. So information literacy is a big one. Um, how to understand the influence of different organisations on public opinion and how do we you know, make sure that education systems are providing people with um, a strong enough basis of critical thinking and critical reflection to understand that all of the information that's out there isn't trustworthy and um, thinking about education less in terms of knowledge transmission but transmitting a certain set of skills that help people to navigate the um, the technologically mediated landscape of information that we have in front of us. So if you think about what's changed in the, the goals of higher education systems in the last 20 years, I would say increasingly we have um, the idea that education is preparation for the workplace, becoming a more prevalent idea rather than education just being a good in its own sake, or education being for the purpose of creating good citizens or something like that. So increasingly, we, we think of, um, and especially, you know, I'm thinking of a UK context, uh, education is increasingly seen as a sort of marketplace transaction where people want to be, get a good return on their investment by being trained for a job that will pay well and so on. Um, but in, in training people to do a job, we don't necessarily teach them to be critical thinkers. We're teaching them how to do something, not to ask why they do it in the first place or why the society is the way it is in the first place. So with that trend towards more vocational education, we also risk uh, a decline in the amount of um, critical uh, pedagogy and critical thinking skills, uh, which um, some subjects like philosophy will always have at the core of what they're doing. Um, and I think those skills are certainly relevant to the workplace but the trend is away from those um, ways of uh, educating people and towards preparation for the, for the workplace. So I think from that point of view, we, we need to safeguard the, the role of critical thinking in higher education. And we need to make sure that if someone is training for a, a job um, as a graphic designer or you know, whatever, they still should have a good grounding in the fundaments of where knowledge comes from, how it circulates, what's at stake, and what rationality is. I think those are things that should be a universal part of the experience of higher education. When we talk about an open society, um, it's not always clear what we mean because there are different interpretations of it. Um, I've been, in my work, looking at the philosophy of uh, Karl Popper, who was one of the first to actually try to derive uh, a sort of political philosophy, philosophy of education, and a philosophy of science, all based around this idea of critical, sort of open rationality. And um, uh, for his vision of an open society, it involves democracy, transparency, uh, openness to criticism, uh, fallibility, and all these things that we associate with kind of good science, I suppose. So one way of understanding what that might look like is to say, it was what a community of scientists would be like. You know, everyone has to be a bit, like, bit more like a scientist. Um, I think also there's a strong social justice element to a lot of this stuff. So openness often figures as a kind of normative ideal as much as a, a description of something value neutral. So people identify as open and they think it's sort of uh, ethical and uh, positive to be that way. 
And so when we look at this kind of interpretation, we see things like uh, widening participation to education, improving access to education, and using digital technologies to uh, in increase the reach of educators. Um, but we've got to be, at the same time, a little bit careful because typically the people who take advantage of these um, opportunities are often themselves already educated, they have uh, access to a computer, they know how to use it, they often have a degree already, and so they benefit from being able to teach themselves. So um, when it comes to open educational resources and MOOCs and things like this, a lot of it is about extending um, educational provision, but we have to also be aware that um, just because you make something openly available, it doesn't mean everyone can actually participate in it. So technology is only part of the um, picture. It's also about the social conditions that allow people to take advantage of the technological change.